You know, for some reason, and we're still not sure why, our podcast today recorded in audio, however, it didn't record in video. We do have the video of Christian King in base jumping, so we're going to add that just after I speak. And we also want to add some photos of Sylvia, Rudy's mom's birthday, we'll put that in here for you, and we'll add some photos of the synchronicity of the fireflies, Ben and Jerry of the graveyard, and also the tale of the dragon road. So we're really sorry. We'll also add in all of the podcast channels in the link below to show you where you can listen to today's podcast in audio. So we'll see you on YouTube next week. Bye-bye. Today I'm here with Christian King. Nope. Christian, tell us a little bit about yourself All right. and where you're from. Sounds good. My name is Christian King. I am from Oroville, California, uh, born and raised in California pretty much. And uh, um, I uh, grew up there as a gymnast. And a little bit about myself is uh, I was an acrobatic growing up, acrobat. And uh, from the time I was uh, five years old, and gymnastics kind of led me into high adrenaline uh, other activities, um, which ended up leading me into parachute sports. And, uh, and then I got into base jumping after several years of skydiving. So um, that's a little bit about myself. I have a nine-year-old son. He's also kind of an adrenaline uh, addiction too. He's, he's a ninja, uh, just like myself. And, and you were on Ninja Warriors, I was. right? Yes, I competed on American Ninja Warriors Season 10 in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I did um, not great. Um, I uh, disappointed myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. it's a quite a hard sport. As, it is. as far as, tell me about base jumping. I know we're here in Twin Falls right yep. now yep. at the, the Prime Bridge. Yep. And you're a professional base jumper. So Correct. tell us a little bit about the sport. Because I know people yep. come from all over the world. Oh, for sure. This is the only legal bridge in the world that you can jump off with a parachute 365 days a year, um, 24-7. And that's what base jumping is, jumping yeah. off a bridge? No, base jumping actually stands for building antenna span earth. So those are the four fixed oh, objects that we jump off of. Um, once you become highly proficient in skydiving uh, and flying a parachute, you can actually remove one of the parachutes and get a little bit riskier and jump off of those four objects. Uh, the prime bridge counts as span, because it's a bridge, so that's the technical name for bridge is span. And uh, people come from everywhere, all over the world, to come here and jump off with a parachute, so. So most of the people are road warriors that come from all different states. Do you have one state that comes the most? You know, Alaska or Texas, or when I drive through the parking lot, I always see s plates from everywhere. Yeah, and think, RVs and, and trucks as well. Yeah, actually looking out there right now, you can see a lot of these converted vans. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of the base jumpers build these out so they can live in them. So there's full kitchens and things in those. That ambulance right there is fully built out. But no, it, uh, people come from everywhere. So it's a very mixture of everywhere. As well as there's a lot of people come here hearing about us. And then they come here just to kind of watch and spectate. So... Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. And you do tandem jumps too, right? So yeah. So he jumps with you? Absolutely. In fact, many people come here to watch, don't even plan on jumping with us, and by the time they meet me, they're jumping off of a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you jump off the bridge and you land. Correct. Next to the water, hopefully not in the water. Hopefully not in, yeah. And then how do you get back up? Do you have to climb back up the rocks? Is there a trail? Is there a boat? What, what's the mode to get out? Good question. So there's a couple ways. Uh, the boat is an option when the boat's out. Uh, some days it's not out, and so then you would just have to hike up the side of the mountain, and there's kind of a trail that leads to it, but then it's um, pretty off trail pr to for the last half of it. So um, it's kind of scary, and they, they joke that the, the climb up is uh, more dangerous than the base jump. So uh, oh. last year there was a guy that uh, during September 11th event that actually fell off. He wasn't a base jumper, but he thought he could try to climb it, and he actually fell off not knowing the route. He got lost. And uh, Life Flight had to come out, and it kind of shut down an event for a few hours until the Life Flight came out. But, yeah, you can get out that way, or you can walk down a trail about 40 minutes, and it uh, leads to Centennial Park, which is a pretty cool park. And somebody can pick you up. And somebody can pick you up in the trailhead, yeah. My understanding is it's it's a pretty safe sport, right? Um, for this object, it's pretty safe. So um, it's the world's most dangerous sport as far as oh. it is classified as the world's most deadly sport. We have more deaths than any sport. 
but that is factoring in wingsuiting. And wingsuiting is a oh. very highly uh, technical proficiency of base jumping. And uh, people are dying um, all the time as they get into that sport. And they factor those statistics into our sport, which should be separate, I think. Um, and then that's what makes base jumping all in general is the world's most deadly sport. But then tandem base jumping is more like commercial airline flights and uh, very safe, perfect track record, zero injuries, zero deaths in 30 years of doing that. Oh, wow. And uh, so there's never been anything that's happened in tandem base jumping. But in solo base jumping, when you're doing flips and aerials, highly dangerous. But this is the safest object that we jump off of. And that's why people come from all the world because they can train here. And if anything goes wrong, you've got water to land in which can actually break up a, a very bad, bad uh, malfunction or, or mistake in the parachute. And then also, you're not going to strike anything after you open, because you can open a parachute, and it can actually open 180 degrees in the opposite direction, and it would smash the building or the cliff. Whereas here, you just fly under the bridge, fix it, correct it, go back. So this is a great place to train. And the people that go base jumping with you as tandem, are mm -hmm. they all young? Are they What ages are they? Oh, that is a funny question. Actually, we had a person that was tracking the ages last year, and the most commonly jumped age was females between 40 and 80, 40 and 80, we'll just put it at that. <laughs> but, so Truth? Yes, absolutely. We had more females between 40 and 80 jumping. You would think that younger people would, but it's actually rare for young people to jump. And uh, we did have a 13-year-old jump last year. She was pretty brave. But the majority of people jumping on tans with us are oh. females between 40 and 80 years old. Now, to our listeners that are watching this yes. or listening to us, uh -huh. how can they get in touch with you? Um, you can go to circusrevolution.org, uh, spelled just like circus. Circusrevolution.org. Yep. Okay. And you can click on tandem base jumps uh -huh. and click book now and there's a calendar and then we will reach out to you and schedule your, your jump date. Nice. Yeah. And my last question uh -huh. to you is... From your experience yeah. of doing this sport and just being, you know, a little bit older than some of the young people that are out here, mm -hmm. for young people that are listening to this podcast, yeah. what would you give them as far as telling them from your experience? Do you have any advice for them? For the younger generation? Yeah. Um, yeah, I actually, I do a lot of tours out here um, and young kids are the most interested in, in actually watching us. So although they don't jump often, they watch and they love it. And so I do a lot of tours with younger generations and my theme is just inspiring them uh, to conquer their fears, to not let fear hold them back. And my biggest advice to the young generation is that life is very short and it's not about yourself. It's all about what you can do in the world, what you can contribute and who you can help. Um, and I, I really uh, encourage the young, young generation to get off social media um, stop seeking self-validation. You don't need people on social media validating you. You can validate yourself. And the things that will validate yourself are going out and conquering your fears, finding what it is that you love to do, what you're passionate about, and following those dreams. And when you do that, you're going to gain so much love for yourself that you're not going to need that validation from social media. So. Perfect. Nice. Thank you, Christian. Thanks for coming on Frisky Biscuit Absolutely. today. And we trust you'll tell your friends and tell everybody about the podcast and have them listen to you. Absolutely. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks you for having did. me. Thanks, Gary.